What's up ladies and gents, it's Noli here, back with more Payday 2. Today, we're gonna get topical. Let's talk leveling. If you've been living under a rock since last Friday, you may not be aware that we have a new update on the horizon, Update 200, which promises to bring with it new levels of infamy and new reasons to level up again. So to get you all caught up, I thought I'd put together a guide to teach you the fastest way to hit max level. In the process, I've found multiple methods which all excel and are worth trying out, but one heist and one strategy in particular which still seems to be king. Oh, and I will briefly touch on another not so fun method which blows all the rest out of the water, but you'll have to ask yourself what it costs. Do keep in mind, if Infamy 3.0 is anything close to what I hope for, these figures and methods may be incorrect by the time it's implemented. But for now, this guide primarily exists to help players who want max Infamy before the additional 475 levels are released later in November. First things first, Heist experience is most notably influenced by the difficulty you choose to play on. Difficulty wise, anything below overkill is not worth grinding, as the jump in the experience multiplier is huge between very hard and overkill, doubling to 10 times base at that difficulty. Overall, I personally recommend Death Wish if you can handle it, as it offers remarkably similar payouts to Death Sentence, but is an infinitely easier difficulty for the relative reward. Death Sentence may reward more, but that's not worth much if it comes with slower completion times and occasional heist failures. If you're not ready for Death Wish, Overkill and Mayhem still offer very respectable experience and are worth running. I recommend the Grinder Pert deck for Mayhem and Below for virtual invincibility, and Stoic for Death Wish or above. Trust me, it really will make life easier for you. Whatever Pert deck you choose, make sure you have at least up to tier 4 unlocked. The general perk, Blending In, is essential in speeding up your leveling process. It's like night and day. All calculations you're going to see in this video will be assuming you have that equipped and are playing with no multiplayer bonuses on Death Wish unless I state otherwise. The elephant in the room is obviously Infamy itself. This has a massive impact on your leveling speed, so keep in mind all numbers you see in this video assume you are base Infamy, and if you're anywhere above that, things should be a lot faster. Up to 205% faster to be precise. Also, remember all figures shown are based on personally recorded averages. I did things as fast as possible without being speedrunner level, but your mileage may vary. Furthermore, I'm not going to go into great detail on how experience is calculated here, although you can look into that further by following the link down in the description. Just keep in mind the stealth bonus, which I'll talk about later, is the largest potential multiplicative bonus and should be valued quite highly. All initial calculations are done without bonuses or multipliers, so it's very much the raw standardized data to inform you which heist you should be running most of the time. So let me present to you my data. I tested for the heist that the community assumed would have the highest experience per minute payout, and here they are listed by efficiency. There's one important omission I'll touch on later because it's such an outlier. Essentially, you're seeing the highest base experience per minute before multipliers, and then the minutes required to get you from level 0 to 100, playing only that heist at its base rate of experience. Now, before I go into detail on how to maximize these heists and get this incredible experience return, it's worth reminding ourselves of the multiplicative factors which will actually determine your overall earnings. First up, negative multipliers exist, which are ignored in the experience per minute stat. Notably, repeatedly completing heists will incur a penalty that can range up to minus 30% of your earnings. This greatly affects the short heists such as Shadow Raid. Likewise, although there are boosts given to heists not completed in a while, up to 15% to be precise, this isn't really worth factoring in due to its unpredictability. If playing online, which is my recommendation for optimizing experience gain, you'll also get access to the Crew Alive bonus, totaling 10% per living crewmate. Playing online comes with the risk of the custody penalty, a flat minus 30%, but this can be avoided quite easily, assuming you're running with a patient group, just ask them to hold out to trade you and avoid incurring that harsh penalty. Additional minor bonuses include team weapon boosts, giving 3% additive XP per weapon and player, up to 24% for a full team, as well as gauge package bonuses, totaling a 5% increase if you find all packages on a heist. Well worth going for if you can, especially on those long heists with a lot of downtime such as cook-off, but not a massive focus for optimization. Also keep in mind that certain heists considered harder by the devs carry negative experience penalties, if completed before requiring their requisite level. This doesn't tend to matter much as leveling in Payday 2 is really top heavy, and this effect will not be felt past level 60. 
finally, the most important bonus to consider is the stealth bonus. This is granted after successfully finishing a heist without setting off the alarm and is applied to the next heist you complete, ranging between 5 and 25% multiplicative. This can be a game changer in long bulk experience heists, with election day giving a 20% bonus and being completable in around 5 minutes with a bit of practice. All you need to do is use the colour and company tagging method, tagging the van on day one which is a unique colour and belongs to a unique company. This works most of the time and is importantly a rapid method of completion. Day 2 just takes a bit of practice, but if you learn the usual crowbar spawns and play fast with Yakuza, it can be finished in about 4 minutes on death sentence. Now that we know how experience is awarded, let's look at the highlighted heists, starting with Cookoff. I was actually surprised to find this heist inferior to a lot of the others on the list, including its older brother Rats Day 1, so why do I still recommend it as one of your top leveling options? Well first of all, the way I ran this experiment, Cookoff would have likely performed better the longer I recorded the data, as it's somewhat of a late bloomer for the heist XP. Also Cookoff has the best return of all the infinite bag heists, as well as having the easiest map layout to boot. This means if you're looking to really maximise your multipliers, you can get the most out of one run. With just the election day increase, you're looking at a reduction of almost 100 minutes for a full infamy. This puts it up with some of the fastest earners out there, and if you have the time and mental fortitude to go for a full infamy in a single run, which becomes more viable the higher your actual level of infamy, this is your best bet, totally avoiding any reputation penalties. A classic for experience grinders, and still one of the very best if you know what you're doing. Next, this one took me by surprise. Boiling Point is an incredibly fast paced and fun heist to play through, there was no way I anticipated it also being one of the best heists in the game for experience. It's also relatively easy, so if you wanted to push the difficulty up to death sentence, this is where you could easily do so to even further push that experience earning potential. You should rush through all objectives as fast as possible and leave after just one scan if you want the highest experience per minute, although it's still pretty efficient if you do additional scans as well. I definitely recommend throwing this one into your leveling routine, if only to make Jimmy happy. Marginally more efficient than Boiling Point, and certainly a little more consistent, we have the Holdout mode. This means any holdout in the game. Sadly, I think this mode is a little underwhelming and find the early waves to be seriously tedious, so it's not my go-to option. But in terms of experience potential, it's amazing if you have the ability to finish Wave 9 consistently. Not only that, but the Holdout exclusive masks are great, so you can kill two birds with one stone if you choose to level this way. Although I don't love Holdout, I think I'd rather switch it up on different Holdout maps than simply sit on the Cook-Off map for hours on end. If you just want consistent completion though, I'd recommend playing either the Moor Crasher or San Martin Bank holdout due to decent cover and easily defensible hostages. Either way, it's good to see some extra use for the sadly forgotten mode. The second most efficient heist for leveling isn't even a complete heist. Simply, it's Big Oil Day 1, where the objective is finding and securing the scientist's address within one of the biker's safes. The beauty of this one is you may as well run it on death sentence, as there's virtually no chance of failing. Simply drop down an ECM, wipe out the bikers over the duration, and drill the Titan safes. If you're efficient, you can do this day sub 5 for pretty excellent experience. This heist can also be completed alone a lot easier than Shadow Raid. Due to being a short heist, it's great for when you just need a small amount of additional experience to hit that max level, so you don't waste any time at level 100. The only real issue here is the distinct lack of variety you'll experience when leveling. This is my go-to if I don't feel like having to concentrate on gameplay and I'm playing alone. Finally, it's tough to dispute Shadow Raid as anything but the overall best heist for leveling in the game, even in 2020. I mean this was basically the heist that encouraged Overkill to add the negative multiplier for overplaying a single heist. That is now its greatest flaw. It won't be long until you're suffering that experience penalty, so you can't use this as your sole method of leveling. Also the ECM rush strategy, which is your best bet for rushing experience, is predominantly a multiplayer strategy. Yes, it's also ideal to level online, but it's nice to have the choice. As you can see from the gameplay, you can speedrun Shadow Raid solo, but it's less efficient and much harder work. It's also fairly important for your experience return that you grab the Samurai Armor, which is a lot easier to do when rushing with a squad. 
Strategy wise, all you need to remember is to drop the dumpster next to the warehouse and bring a Yakuza build for that extra movement speed. Also remember, like Big Oil, you can happily run this one on Death Sentence for the extra multiplier. I think occasionally ECM rushing can be fun, and Shadow Raid really does have great experience per minute potential. Just remember to mix it in with other heists on the list, and honestly every heist in the game for that matter. Heists like 4 stores or Ukrainian job can be great for new players with few skills to get you rolling, whilst Big Bank for example has a massive single heist payout, if you're willing to commit the time. Unless, and this is more of an honourable mention than anything else because it requires some serious coordination, unless you have a team of players communicating to ECM Rush Big Bank. Yep, this is the big one. It's a tough rush and even requires your hacker ECMs to run efficiently. But as shown in Mark MB's video on the heist, it has unrivaled experience potential if you can pull it off. Roughly 218,600 experience per minute, almost double Shadow Raid's payout. Like I say, I can't really recommend this as it's tough to replicate. Shadow Raid is an awful lot easier and more consistent. But if you need to hit max rank as soon as possible, you now know what you need to do. Follow their guide, link down below. Except I haven't covered everything, because any modern leveling guide is not complete without discussing Crime Spree. This is the accumulative mode which lets you chain heists of increasing difficulty together to store as one large reward. At about a 484 spree, you will have earned the max amount of required experience for a full level of infamy, equaling 23,336,300 XP. On average, this equates to about a minute a spree point, so that's about 484 minutes of gameplay, plus or minus depending on your heist efficiency. This puts CS somewhere towards the middle of the list, but at least it's a fun and varied method. Also, the grind can be done at level 100 and stored, so you can immediately hit level 100 again as soon as you go infamous. A unique feature that makes grinding Crime Spree for levels a little easier. But there's more to them than that. One very important mechanic found in the Crime Spree mode, which you can easily abuse if you simply want to level rapidly, is the catch up bonus. Now, I don't recommend doing this as it trivializes leveling and gives you the appearance of a seasoned heister without the necessary experience expected of a high level player, meaning you're much more likely to get kicked from public lobbies. But if you simply must reach Infamy 25 before Update 200's release, it can be a legitimate, if frowned upon method. All you need is a friend with a spree at around 13,800. This is quite achievable legitimately if you know how to play on high sprees, although it is a massive time sink. So many people you run into with these high sprees will have cheated or have been boosted by a cheater themselves. So let your conscience decide if that's fine by you. But if you do happen to have a friend at a similar spree range to this, you simply need to join them, successfully complete a single heist at that rank while you have your own spree active, and you will gain the 484 spree levels needed to fully complete that infamy. This happens because you're granted a 3.5% catch up bonus on any spree higher than your own, meaning you can go infamous in the space of just a single day heist. If you'd like to know more about crime sprees and how to get those 10,000 plus spree heists done, stay tuned on the channel for my crime spree guide. I'm holding off until update 200 before releasing it in the fear of systems changing and it being instantly outdated. Anyway, that does it for this video. A combination of the six heists and methods including crime spree is how I personally like to level and how I will be going through the new infamies assuming not much changes in update 200 but do keep in mind Mark's ECM rushes if you have a squad together. If that's not enough and you just want to speed through, then you can of course follow the infamy boosting method, but if you just want to min-max off your own steam, I'd suggest a combination of Shadow Raid and Big Oil ECM rushes with Boiling Point, Hotline Miami, Safe House Raid, Hoxton Breakout and the Diamond thrown in to both avoid getting bored of the repetition and negative experience multiplier that comes with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and are looking forward to Infamy 3.0. This was a massive research project for me, so here's hoping it'll actually help you gain some levels fast. Stay tuned for the next story video, it is coming, I'll see you all very soon. As ever, thank you very much to my mean Infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early exclusive access to my videos, including the story videos, check out my Patreon link below. Remember that Discord is open to all if you crave some more payday discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you all very soon for the next one.